Lesson 10.2b, Using the Order of Operations to Evaluate Expressions. Expressions may have more than one operation or more than one variable. To evaluate these expressions, we substitute the given value for each variable, and then we use the order of operations. So here's a real quick review. Using the order of operations ensures that everyone who evaluates a given expression correctly will get the same value. We do inside parentheses first, then we do any exponents, then we multiply or divide from left to right whichever comes first. Then we add or subtract from left to right whichever comes first. Here it's telling us to evaluate the expression for the given value of the variable. 5 times n minus 6. So remember when a number is right up next parentheses, that means to multiply. So we have 5 multiplied by n minus 6. We need to do within the parentheses first. It's telling us that n is equal to 9. So we substitute the 9 for the n. We do inside the parentheses. 9 minus 6 is 3. Then we multiply. 5 times 3 is equal to 15. When n is equal to 9, 5 times n minus 6 is equal to 15. Here we have 5n minus 6. Look, it looks almost exactly like this one, except there's no parentheses. And it's telling us n is equal to 9, just like that one. We have a 5 next to the n. That means we're going to multiply the 5 times whatever the value of n is. So we're going to multiply 5 times 9. That's equal to 45. Now we're going to subtract, and 45 minus 6 is equal to 39. So when n is equal to 9, 5n minus 6 is equal to 39. So without the parentheses, we get a different value. When there were parentheses, we subtracted within the parentheses first, got a 3, and then we multiplied. But when there were no parentheses, we multiplied 5 times 9 and then subtracted the 6. Completely different answer. Here we have three variables in our algebraic expression. We have an a, b, c. It's telling us that a is equal to 12, so we're going to put a 12 here for the a. b is equal to 8, so we're going to put an 8 here for the b, plus 1 for the c. And going left to right, because we have addition and subtraction, we subtract first. So remember, when it gets to the add or subtract, it's from left to right, whichever comes first, and we have subtraction first. So we're going to do 12 minus 8, which is 4. Then we're going to do the plus 1. That's equal to 5. Here we have x raised to the second power minus x. And it's telling us that x is equal to 12. So we're going to substitute 12 for each x. We have 12 raised to the second power minus 12. 12 times 12 is 144 minus 12. That's 132. There were no parentheses, so we did the exponent first, then we subtracted. Now we can solve this one and evaluate this expression in a couple different ways. We can do 6 times x plus 3, x is equal to 5, so we've got 5 plus 3. We can add within the parentheses and get 6 times 8, which is 48. But we can also solve this using the distributive property. If you remember back from lesson 2.1b, there'll be a link in this description if you missed it. It's like a mother bird feeding her babies in a parentheses nest. She's going to go to this one, and then she's going to go to this one. She doesn't skip anyone. So we're going to do 6 times 5 plus, we have a plus here, so there's going to be a plus between them, 6 times 3. We distribute the multiplication to this first number and then to the second number. And because there's a plus sign here, we put a plus sign between them. So we have 6 times 5 is 30 plus 6 times 3 is 18. It's equal to 48. So we got the same value doing it either way. So there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. My preference for equations or expressions like this is to just quickly add within the parentheses and just multiply once. This way, 
we've got to multiply two times and then do addition. Here we're just multiplying once after we add. So that's my preference, but know that you could also distribute the 6 to both of these numbers and add them and get the same answer. Here we have three different algebraic expressions, but it's telling us to evaluate each expression for x is equal to 4, y is equal to 6, and z is equal to 9. So each of these variables are going to have these values for each of these algebraic expressions. For x, y minus z, they're right next to each other, so that means multiplication. We're going to do 4 times 6 minus 9. We substitute in the values. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 9 is equal to 15. Here we've got yz. We're going to multiply them together. That means we have 6 times 9. That's 54. And we're going to add 2 times x. And since x is a 4, we're going to add 2 times 4, which is an 8. And 54 plus 8 is equal to 62. Here we have x raised to the third power minus y plus z. We substitute in the values. We have 4 raised to the third power. And we can do a little math on the side. We know 4 times 4 is 16. And then we can do 16 times 4 on some scratch paper. And that's going to give us a 64. So we know 4 raised to the third power is 64. And we're going to subtract. 6 plus 9, which is a 15, so we're subtracting a 15, we get 49. Okay, we finished the second part. We're going to do the last part, which is evaluating real-world expressions. So just remember, as you're using the order of operations, when you get to the multiplication or division part, it's from left to right, whichever comes first. And when you get to the addition or subtraction part, that's from left to right, whichever comes first. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you have a really nice day. Bye.